This is this is not the, this is not just the American dream. This is the Bible story. That power is at work within us. Why? So that God can get the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, throughout all generations, throughout Abraham's generation, David's generation. 20 years ago, it worked. 4,000, 6,000 years ago, it worked. If it worked 6,000 years ago and 4,000 years ago and 2,000 years ago and 20 years ago, it works today. And we've been pastoring for 25 years, almost 25 years to the day. It's interesting. Uh, so we started in 1998. And we started in uh, Holbrook Palmer Park, and it was right about the first week of August. Today's July 30th. It's awesome. So I was just thinking about that. 25 years, almost to the day. Hallelujah. Nancy Gabbard was talking about using imaginations in prayer. Freeing up your imagination and using your imagination in prayer. And it helped me a lot. It just, I got freer in prayer. Uh, she talked about going with that first impression. Don't filter it. I just see the color yellow. I see the color red. I, I the number seven, um, I see a cat walking on a fence. What's that mean? I see, uh, I see a snail, I, whatever. Just and song titles, the uh, 70 song titles. We, we were, we got blessed by the, uh, late 60s, early 70s song title, um, things like that. Weird things um, spoke to people's childhood, spoke to people on a very personal level. And that was the amazing thing about um, how going with these unique impressions would help unlock somebody's heart and help show how much God knows them, understands them, and wants to heal them on the inside. And as they would get free on the inside from a childhood trauma, bad memory, that all of a sudden that freedom from a, an event way, way, way in the past would unlock their healing in the present, would unlock their blessing today. And so you have to be kind of free to do that. Right. And uh, so the very next day, we take uh, Jill to Sausalito and uh, words of knowledge were just so easy for me uh, because I was so freed up and I had so much fun giving words of knowledge in Sausalito. And I had three that just landed right on, um, walked into a store. Uh, there was nobody in the store, just a shopkeeper there. And she was just kind of doing her thing and she had her head down and I walked in, looked at the clothes and the hats and, you know, Sausalito this, Sausalito that, Sausalito. And I just walked back past her and I, oh, I got something. God says that you are thinking about your wedding. And she goes, and then she's like, you know, how'd you know that? <laughs> and uh, I said, he wants to bless your wedding. He, he knows about your wedding. He sees you right there. You just feel all lonely and bored here, just in an empty store. But God is with you in your empty store and he sees you and knows you in this boring, empty store with nothing happening. God is in the midst of this and he's blessing your wedding. And she just told her, it was awesome. It was really, really fun to then the waiter that Mark gave a big blessing to. And, and uh, we uh, we saw that uh, he was called to be a minister. And he's like, really? And But by the end, he was all like, I, I can do this. <laughs> it was really cute. It was really cute. At first, he was kind of, oh. and then he was kind of like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is me. It was really fun. We had we had a great time. So, imagination sanctified and given to God is something very, very, very good. We have the word "expect good." We have that phrase on our refrigerator in Florida expect good because Gigi did a message on it and it really resonated with both of us expect good what kind of a day are you going to have today expect good. Yeah. expect good expect good how's how's this afternoon going to go expect good how's this week going to go expect good how's monday going to go expect good oral roberts had a tv show that went on and on and uh, did very very well 
And in every broadcast, he used to have this, this say, and he would say it to people and it helped them. He was the first encouraging guy before Joel Osteen. <laughs> and then Paul Roberts used to say, something good is going to happen. Yeah. And he had little badges and he had stickers and people had bumper stickers that said, something good is going to happen to you. And the cute thing about that is I didn't even, I didn't know that. I didn't watch Oral Roberts show or anything like that as a kid. Um, but a uh, yeah, um, gentleman that did and was familiar with that expression was at our uh, table. Again, we're talking about this sort of uh, immigrant story, American, American dream sort of story. This guy is uh, new to the country. He's not a US citizen. In fact, he's on a student visa. And so he's not allowed to work on a student visa. And so uh, Pastor Gigi had a, uh, a feeding program that was uh, held out of our garage once a week. And so they would distribute, they would get food out of Sam's Club and uh, Walmart and things like that. And then they would uh, drop it off at these distribution places. And one of them was our garage. And I think it was maybe Tuesdays or Thursdays, do you remember what day? I don't know. Um, but this gentleman would pick up food from this food ministry and he needed it because he, he wasn't allowed to work. Um, and then he would make us some, uh, some really delicious Indian meal. And then he would bring it back to us and tie it back to us. He was using those principles of the tithe on food. It's pretty cool. Um, he had a good heart. Mm. He had a really good heart. That same gentleman in two checks. Well, let's put it this way. In one check, within 10 years, he gave a million dollars to a ministry, to the ministry that we were serving in. And then the next year, he gave another million dollars back to that ministry this isn't the american dream this is bible this is abraham's story this is the bible and this guy's at our table and he's a man of god and uh, we were praying about some things and he he just closed with this something good <laughs> is going to happen to him and he said it with this cute indian accent Something good is going to happen to you. <laughs> you have to kind of do the head level. And it's precious guy. Precious guy. Precious guy. And I kept saying for all the rest of that evening, something good is going to happen to me. <laughs> Hold on. And that was it. And then I said it the next day. And the next day. And the next day. And then I remember on a Wednesday. And I think I don't, it's less than a week. Less than a week later, the phone rings early in the morning. And a house that we had put in an offer on, we were renting at the time, and uh, an FHA foreclosure that we had put an offer on uh, had sold to somebody else, that sale fell out. It sold to somebody else, that sale fell out. And then it had come to us. And this is like six months later that this whole process took forever. And Something good happened to me. <laughs> and they called and they said, that house is yours if you want it. I'm like, yes, I want. And uh, not only that, we got the lower interest rate that had expired and interest rates had climbed a bit. Uh, we got this sort of below market interest rate for it. It's just a little bit. And um, we moved, we bought that house with closing. It was less than $3,000. With closing costs, everything, 3% down with closing costs, it was less than $3,000. It's like $2,500, $2,700, something like that. And our rent payment was here and our housing payment was, it was less. It was less. Mm -hmm. And it was less. And it was a cute little house. Yeah. Cute house. Um, something good is going to happen to you. Expect good because he is able to do, he is able to do immeasurably more then we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work where it's within you to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Let's read it from the Amplified. Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to, parentheses, carry out his purpose and, unparentheses, do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers get this hopes and dreams 
according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Hopes and dreams are in there. And you have to dare to ask or believe or imagine. Dare, 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 dare. <laughs> you got to live. I mean, it's kind of like, would you dare to ask for that? Come on. Dare to ask, dream or imagine. All right, so I want us all to close our eyes, and I'm going to read that verse a couple of times. And I want you to dare. <laughs> I want you to dare to go further, go farther. Ask, dream, and imagine. Ephesians 3.20 amplified. I'm daring you. I double dare you. I double double dare you. Now to him who is secure his purpose and do super abundantly more. Then all that we dare or think be beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory, so that he would get glory. Why? Is this selfish? No, it's not selfish. It's not selfish. So that you would get the glory? No. So that you could, you know, act like a drug lord? No. So that God would get the glory. So that God would get the glory. This is to glorify God. Your, your prosperity will glorify God. Your doing well will glorify yeah. God. Your being able to write big checks will glorify God. Your being able to go further and farther and travel will glorify God. Your ability to uh, fly everywhere you want to will glorify God. Reading it again, keep your eyes closed, dare and ask and imagine. Now to him, this is about God, because he's able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams. Infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams. Ask or imagine. Dare ask or think. Infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, and dreams. Oh, this is fun. Mm -hmm. glory to god glory to god my little illustrations seem just small you know compared to some of these things but just applying this you got to apply it now and you got to apply it where you're at so applying it now and applying it where i'm at i said things like i have two good cars in the driveway i have two good cars in the driveway i have two well running cars in the driveway i have two good cars in the driveway I have two good cars. That I say that. My son is saying that and he's talking about it. You know, um, he's testifying to the fact that his confessions are working. And he is using, regularly using these confessions. And his confessions are working for him. And he thanked us. And he said this. Because he's always kind of been aware of and around, because he grew up in this area. He's been aware of and around kids that uh, their parents had a lot. And just had a lot. And we had enough. But we didn't have a lot. But he was always around kids that had a lot. And, and even today, he's around people in Miami that have a lot. And he said this. He was extremely grateful. And he said, Mom and Dad, you gave me the tools. You gave me the tools. I have the tools to succeed. Everybody in this room has the tools to succeed. And in 25 years, we have seen people succeed. We've been seen people not succeed. It had to do with using the tools, yeah. with doing this first, with doing what Pastor Gigi talked about in the offering, um, being a generous and a liberal giver, with doing what God says to do. 
confession and prayer and daring to ask, think, or imagine will work for you. Will work for you. What you say is so vitally important. And so there's kind of four steps here. Imagine it. See it. Say it. Receive it. Imagine it. Number two, see it. Number three, say it. Number four, receive it. Number one, imagine it. Number two, see it. Number three, say it. Number four, receive it. Imagine, say, see, receive. I can only imagine. Yeah. So we talked about imagine and seeing it. Let's talk a little bit about saying it. Um, confession is really, really important. What you're saying is super important. And so I kept saying something good is going to happen to me. <laughs> and you can do that too. It will work for you. Something good is going to happen to me. Well, um, Pastor Gigi wrote a whole book on the power of your words. And uh, she's very good at confession. And after a lot of confessing, one time she stopped and she says, God, this is kind of uh, tiring. You know, you really, you know, if you get a list and you work it a couple times a day, uh, you can kind of, it, it, it is, it does take effort. <laughs> God answered her when she said, I'm, I'm kind of tired. Of this is, this is kind of a bit of work here. God said, what did I rest from on the sixth day? Mm -hmm. On the seventh day, he rested. Yeah. What had he been doing for six days? Saying. Saying. Let there be. 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 Let there be home ownership. <laughs> Let there be bills paid off. Let there be no credit card debt. Student debt. Let there be. Let there be. Come on. Let there be retirement checks. Let there be benefits. Come on. Hallelujah. Let there be. God did this and then God rested on the seventh day. You know, good parents want their kids to succeed in a big way. And many times parents want their kids to succeed more than the kid even wants to. I remember there were some times there in high school and I didn't want to go to bed. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do that. My parents wanted me to, to get going and to succeed more than I wanted to. Right? God wants this for you. Once you. Once you. Once you blessed. Yes. Lord. God wants you to succeed. Yes. yes. Your daddy. Your daddy. daddy, your daddy, your daddy wants you on top. Yes. Your daddy wants you to come up. Yes. And we've seen people in 25 years go from the homeless shelter to home ownership. Yeah. We've seen it. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. God wants you to succeed. Abraham went from immigrant status in a hostile land, in a hostile situation, to defeating the kings. And being very, very blessed. Very, very blessed. Come on. So God gave Abraham some interesting things. God gave Abraham a visual image. God had to give him a visual image. And he said, Abraham, come on out here. Come on out here at night. And come out of your tent. Let me talk to you. Look at the stars, Abe. You know how many stars Abraham saw? Have you ever been in the desert? You ever been way away from the city? Been up in the Sierras on a moonless night? You know how many stars you can see? <laughs> there was a moonless night right after the hurricane in uh, Florida. After Hurricane Ian went through. And Hurricane Ian blew out everything. There was no water vapor. There was no dust. There was no nothing in the atmosphere. And it was a moonless night. And, you know, we were safe and sound. We had no electricity and neither did anybody else. 
and the stars were amazing. And Fort Myers had electricity and some other places had electricity. And so there was some light pollution. Well, in Abraham's day, there's some, just a few campfires here, right? There's, there's no PG&E. Look at the stars, Abe. He saw the whole Milky Way. He saw it. It was there. It was very, very easy to see. So shall your descendants be, brother. Abe's got no kids. This was a huge, huge, huge mm, stretch, stretch. Believe bigger. Dare ask. Dare ask. Oh, but, but okay. Some of you are saying, you know, I'm 62. And so, and, and there's a few of us who are in my age bracket. And the thing about it is, is a lot of us think, well, not now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 62. April's 99. <laughs> Have kids. Start a family. Come on. Well, takes our takes every person who's over 40 takes your excuse away. <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing to say. You got absolutely nothing to say. And then we're gonna talk about David. So all of you younger people, you got no excuse either. <laughs> David was under 30. <laughs> Come on. David was David was really young. Abe was really old. Ageism is out the question. Can't use age. Can't use age. Can't use age. So shall your descendants be. Now, here's the thing. And it wasn't just like, you know, really cool. This set the example. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. And it set the stage for Jesus' sacrifice and for our righteousness today. Yes. This wasn't yes. a small thing. Right. This isn't just a little promise. This is the whole Bible in one verse. Believing life. God and accepting his goodness is the whole thing. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. So it just took us right into the New Testament. Wow, this is huge. This is huge. I hope I can finish on time. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm going to, I've got lots to say. I'm going to say less. Last, God changed Abraham's words also. Yes. This is, all these principles are similar in David and Goliath. David was anointed 13 years before he became king. 13 years before he became king. David is just, a shepherd doing nothing but just taking care of sheep, but he's anointed to be king. The same anointing that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is in us. Mm -hmm. The same Holy Spirit power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead has anointed you. Mm -hmm. The same anointing that came on David when Samuel anointed him is the same Holy Ghost power that's on the New Testament church today. And David killed the lion, David killed the bear, then David killed Goliath. Did David go to the throne the next day? No. It was years and years and years afterwards. David just qualified for marriage after killing Goliath and, and got to be in Saul's house where Saul was throwing spears at him. It didn't, David didn't have it easy, ever. And so David wrote Psalms in his prayers and his praise to god and his confessions of hell and difficulty on his way to the throne and once he became king he's still writing the psalms because it was still hard it was hard the whole time it was hard the whole time and david stayed faithful david just kept climbing and climbing and climbing and stayed faithful and it was hard the whole time. Hallelujah. God had to change Abraham's words. When Abraham was 90 and nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you. And I will multiply you exceedingly. Who's our father of the faith? The guy 
God said, I'm going to multiply you exceedingly. Jesus died on the cross that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through faith in Christ Jesus. That this blessing, that the blessing that's on Abe might come upon us. Come on. He was multiplied exceedingly. Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you. And you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, high father, but your name shall be Abraham, father of a multitude. Abraham just got one kid. For I have made you father of many nations. And I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I'll make nations of you and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant with you. Well, he changed his name. And so high father to father of a multitude, father of a multitude, father of a multitude. And all 300 servants, hey, multitude man. Hey, father of a multitude. Hey, homeowner. Hey, blessed with great retirement. Hey, four cars in the garage. Hey, how are you? How are you? Change the name, change his name, change his confession, change what he was hearing on a day-to-day -day basis. What do you say about yourself? What do you say about your situation? We have some friends that we've talked to through the ages that, um, ages, through the years that um, have <laughs> I don't know if I qualify for that. Yet. That, but they're they have cute expressions that put themselves down, and it sounds kind of polite. It sounds folksy. It's friendly. I mean, you don't want to brag about yourself and say I'm, a, you know, do this. But you also don't put yourself down. Seems friendly, seems nice, but don't do that. Don't talk about that. Um, sometimes, you know, I'm working along and I have a bad thought about something I made, I did as a mistake, and I go, dummy, you know, <laughs> don't call yourself dummy. <laughs> Who was the community that used to say, big dummy, big <laughs> dummy? Was that, was that Red Fox? Severin Sun. Yeah. Severin Sun. Big dummy. But I, I hear that, and I'll, I'll I'll say that about myself sometimes. And don't do that. I'm so blessed. Expect good. Expect good. I'm blessed. Abraham changed his, they changed his name. And, and interestingly, a uh, number of disciples had their names changed in the New Testament, so they would completely see themselves differently. You are Peter, rock, and upon this rock, it used to be Simon, but now I'm going to call you Peter. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. You rocks here. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's bring this to a close. So, four principles. Imagine it. Ephesians 3.20. See it. Say it like Abraham did. David did a lot of saying when he went up to Goliath, to face Goliath. The woman with the issue of blood did these things. Imagine it, see it, say it, receive it. Abraham did it. David did it. Woman with the issue of blood did it. Imagine it, see it, say it, receive it. Nancy Gabbard got us using our imaginations. We're going to be using our imaginations to see ourselves blessed. How are you going to see it more often? Putting it on the refrigerator. We have that uh, story of a pastor couple. Um, he's single and he writes down all the things he wants to see in his wife. And he writes down 10 things that he wants to see in his wife that, that he's believing God, that she's these 10 things. And he put it on his bathroom mirror and he said it and he said it and he said it and he said it. And he said it. And then he met Miss Tulsa, who's also a beautiful singer, who is a wonderful Christian. They're married today and um, three wonderful kids. And the kids are serving in church with them. Um, the kids are on the worship team. Wife's on the worship team. Blast! Blast! Everything he confessed 
He's living today. Imagine it, see it, say it, receive it. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for uh, encouraging us. I thank you for Ephesians 3.20. Lord, I pray that you would uh, make these truths real to us and help us to apply these truths. Help us to, um, to see it, to say it, to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. This message today is for wherever you're at. There are some people who are at a good level, and there are some people who are really just, you know, they feel like they're Joseph. Joseph was thrown in prison, and uh, Joseph came out of prison to number two in the whole kingdom. Joseph was thrown in a pit, sold into slavery. And Joseph won. I don't care where you're at. This is the Bible story about winning from wherever you're at. You can get there from here. 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 And today you're on your way. Amen. Hallelujah. Terry, come on. Up. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, I'm excited. Brad excited me today. We had a teacher. We had a teacher at Rama. His name was Keith Moore, and Keith Moore was teaching us on um, giving and receiving, and also submission and authority. And um, Keith Moore was awesome, fantastic teacher. And so we thought that Keith Moore was rolling in the dough. Yeah, we, we thought that Keith Moore had it had it all together. He was driving a yellow Corvette, and he had his fancy suit on, and he was moving. Anyways. I was going to, I would go to the all you can eat um, restaurants and I was at Luby's one time and I saw Keith and his wife, Phyllis, and they were eating and Keith only had the, Phyllis was eating, but Keith wasn't eating. I didn't think anything about it. But anyways, anyways Keith Moore told us later on, Keith Moore said that when he was going to Rama, he didn't have much money. He was struggling. But what did he do? He kept on saying, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. And he's kept staying faithful, kept staying faithful, kept doing everything they asked him to do. You want to sing, Keith? Yes. You want to preach, Keith? Yes. Do you want to do a healing school, Keith? Yes. Anyways, Keith Moore was so faithful at Rama that now he's one of the top ministers in the whole country. And Keith Moore is so successful that when a friend of ours that was going to school and he was going to start a ministry in, um, in was it Tonga? Mm -hmm. And all, anyways, Samoa. 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 So anyways, Keith Moore, they needed a ship. So to go from island to island to island, Keith Moore sold, I think, $250,000 into, $750, into their ship. And anyways, Keith Moore just told a story that was so exciting. Keith Moore said that he was at a church and he heard that a pastor that he was going to the church for was doing a building program. And Keith Moore didn't say anything about it. Keith Moore handed him a check for a million dollars. Whoa. A million dollars. And he's given a million back to Raymond. Too. He's given a million. He, he started out with nothing. Yeah. Mississippi boy, he's giving millions here, millions there, millions here, millions there. Because why? Because he was faithful in the small things and did the small things well. And like Gigi said, he got promoted. Amen. And he did what was right. He didn't have indoor plumbing when he was in up. elementary school. Didn't have anything. And he's, I mean, he's, he's the nicest, kindest, most faithful person ever. And because he was faithful in the little things, look where he's at now. God promoted him, promoted him, promoted him, promoted him. And he didn't ask for anything. He just did what he's supposed to do at the time he was supposed to do it. And who promoted him? God promoted him. Right. Now he's now he's just doing awesome. That was my story.